Where are you? Late as always. Come on, I don't have all day. Oh, about time. You're here. You're late. That's because you're usually late. Been drinking all night again? Don't start in on me. And just so you know, I haven't touched the stuff since we split. Kind of tells you something, doesn't it? Hmm. Well, you look horrible. I haven't had breakfast. I'm just starving. But I had to drive out here to meet you, so I haven't had time to eat. Carly, come here. Just so you know, I don't appreciate this. You made that abundantly clear. This was your week to have her. Just babysit for today. Is that too much to ask from her mother? Apparently, it's too much to ask from her father. Do we really have to go through this again? They're making everyone come in. They found an investor, and they want to make the presentation before they change their minds. If we can make it happen, it'll mean a lot more money, which means more alimony for you. Oh, believe me. That's the only reason I'm bothering. You know this interrupts my life, too. I have one of those as well. You can paint with Carly around. Have you tried to get anything done with a ten-year-old mucking about? Besides, my agent wants me to attend an opening of a friend of hers tonight. Hobnob, make contacts. Fine, it'll give Carly something to do. Uh, no, she's not coming. I'll have Susan next door watch her while I'm gone. Mom, I don't like Mrs. Libby. Blame your father. He's supposed to be watching you this week. I'll stay home by myself. No, you won't. Dad! Stop it. Go play in the park while your father and I talk. There aren't any kids to play with. I don't care. Just go. You're giving Mummy a headache. I'll call if I'm not going to be able to pick her up tomorrow. Uh-uh. She's your responsibility this week. I'm not letting you dump her on me. One day is enough. Fine. Whatever. I need to go. I'm late already. I'll see you tomorrow, Carly. Carly? Carly! Oh, where'd she get off to? <laughs> no one should be crying on a nice day like this. What's the matter, child? Who are you? I'm the doctor. Doctor, I don't think you can help me. Oh, my dear girl. You'd be surprised what I can do. Carly! Carly, where are you? Answer your father, Carly. I don't have time for your games. I need to get back to work. I'll come back for her when I can. <laughs> You're not leaving me here, Robert. Help me find her. I'm late as it is. I don't care. Just find your daughter so we can both get out of here. Carly! Carly! I see her. Where? She's on that bench over there. Oh. I'm going to smack that kid. I told her to go play in the park. Carly! Carly! And if you look right over there, just next to the moon, there's a star called Roma. Who lives there? Some marvelous fish people. Like mermaids? Sort of. But they have fish heads and human legs. <laughs> Weird. Carly Jacobs, what are you doing here? I was just... Don't... Answer, just get in the car so we can get going. What's the matter with you bothering this man? Oh, she was no bother at all. Quite to the contrary, she was refreshingly intelligent and inquisitive. <laughs> I'd rather she was quiet and obedient. We found her, so I'm going. I'll be back to pick her up later. Tomorrow morning. As soon as I can. Tomorrow. Ah, oh, that man. I hope I didn't startle you, a stranger talking with your daughter. 
You seem to have quite a way with children, Mr. Doctor. And I found that children often have the most open of minds. Look, I have a very important opening I must get to this evening, and since Carly has taken a liking to you, I was wondering if you'd be willing to babysit her. Can you? Madam, you don't even know me. To entrust something so precious to a complete stranger. I would pay you one hundred pounds for the day till midnight, two a.m. the latest. Certainly, there are better candidates. Oh, there are, but my ex-husband put me in a spot. I'm sorry, but as tempting as your offer is, I must pass. Please, doctor. I'm confident your mother will find someone far more suitable. Come along, Carly. I need to swing by the house anyway and pick up a few things. Susan's going to have to watch you. I'll give you some DVDs to keep you occupied till I get home. <laughs> Mummy, no, Mrs. Libby is mean. Perhaps there are some professional services available who may be able to provide a better prospect. You've made it quite clear you're not interested in my family life, so please keep your opinions to yourself. Young lady, I have seen rabid wolves tend to their children better than you have. Perhaps you can find one to babysit Carly then. It would at least take one more burden off of my shoulders. Come on, Carly. I'm never going to get everything done I need to now. Hmm. Good morning, Mr. Jacobs. Morning. Good morning. Are you all right, sir? What? You don't look too good. I just haven't had time for breakfast. You wouldn't have some crisps or something, would you? Uh, no. Sorry. It's all right. I'll get something from the vending machine. Thanks. Hope you feel better. I'm sorry, Mr. Grat. There's been no sign of them. No, not even a phone call. I'll be sure to let you know if I hear anything. Oh, I didn't see you there. I have those papers you wanted, but so far the investors haven't shown up yet. Do you want me to? What are you doing? What are you? Mr. Jacobs, so glad you could join us. I'm sorry, a little trouble with the X. They're all like that. I'm not late, am I? No, they haven't shown up yet. I hope they haven't changed their minds. I'm sure they haven't. I talked to them last night. You do have the papers drawn up, yes? I have an M O U, but we'll have to see what they say before a formal contract can be drafted. Don't want to just shove something in their face they don't like and blow the whole deal. We also don't want to give them the opportunity to get cold feet. We'll get them. Don't worry. So, Bob, how's little Karen, right? Oh, she's fine. Her mother couldn't wait to see her. Good, good. Children can be a positive asset as long as they don't eat up too much of your time, right? They're here. Calm down. You think it was Father Christmas at the door? Mr. Harlow, Ms. Rucker, I'm so glad you could make it. Vice Chancellor Grant, Robert Jacobs, this is Jack Harlow and Stacy Rucker. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. This better not be a waste of our time. Jack, I promised Dr. Baston we have an open mind. I thought you said they were on board with this. Mr. Harlow is just being pragmatic, of course. Please forgive us, brusqueness. We have another meeting later today, and are rather pressed for time. You have something to show us, and you want us to fund its commercial development and distribution. So, let's see what you have. Yes, yes. I know your time is very valuable, and we greatly appreciate it. Doctor Baston, I am sitting on my backside, so it will be very difficult for you to kiss it. Just show us what you have, and let us get on with our day. My partner hasn't had his coffee this morning, as you can see. It was a long drive. Bob, would you get Mr. Harlow some coffee? Black, cream. Perhaps it would be better if we just got on with the presentation. Of course. <clears throat> As we know, one of the problems facing our planet is adequate supplies of food. Some have more than enough, while others struggle with unimaginable poverty. For most, food must be brought in from great distances and at prices many cannot afford. What I have developed, <clears throat> we, 
at the university is a plant that grows rapidly in any soil, in any climate, that is completely edible and provides virtually complete nutrition, including vitamins and minerals normally only found in animal products. What? Are you serious? The growth process is days and is self-replicating. No cross-pollination is necessary. Anyone can grow this, even someone with a brown thumb. I can attest to that. This discovery will revolutionize the world. No more poverty. No more starvation. Children dying from a lack of nutrition will be a horrible memory of the past. Amazing. These are some pretty far-fetched claims, Doctor. What evidence do you present? Your skepticism is understandable. However, the research we have done here is not undocumented. In fact, it is an offshoot of research conducted by the Nut Hutch, a UN-sponsored organization. You mean you copied someone else's work? Oh, nothing of the sort. Back in the 70s, they came up with a soy-based food, but development stopped shortly thereafter. You know those kind, hippies. More interested in protest rather than progress. <laughs> I understand the leader of the group is out picketing oil rigs now. We acquired the rights and continued development a number of years ago. Twenty, to be exact. Twenty years of my life I have dedicated to this. You should be right proud of your accomplishment. So, you've got some good science backing you up. But what of practical considerations? How well does this work in the real world? You've already seen it for yourself. You said you drove through town. Remarkably green, isn't it? especially for this time of year. Before we started public testing, this city was a concrete jungle. Now look at it. If it wasn't for the streets and buildings, you'd almost swear you were in a forest. If that doesn't impress you, perhaps you'd like to know that the transformation took place over four weeks. Four weeks? You did all that in four weeks? From a single test seed. How do you control its growth? We can't have the environmentalists crawling down our throats. This may feed the world, but if it upsets the ecosystem, they won't let it get off the ground. It is self-regulating. It will only grow so much and then stop. It would only continue to grow if you cut off some of its vines or remove its seed, and then only to replace what you cut off. This sounds like a miracle. What does it taste like? Uh, that's where we hit a bit of a rub. Oh? Bring us a plate. It's... Horse droppings. We've improved the taste over the last several generations. This is improved? Our research has found that it's an acquired taste, like oysters or caviar. <laughs> Once you get used to it... You shouldn't have to get used to food. It's either good or it isn't. It will solve world hunger. I'd rather starve than eat this. That's easy to say when you have a full stomach, Mr. Harlow. But you did propose that this new food source could be applied worldwide. And only dirt-poor Africans would eat this. Maybe. Further development will yield a better tasting product, I'm certain of it. And what data do you have on long-term consumption? As of yet? As of yet, nothing. I'm sorry. As worthy as your project may be, I don't see it ready for commercial investment yet. You have to understand, we need to know if there are any side effects to this stuff. What happens if we put it out to market and later find it causes cancer or someone grows a tail or something like that? People are very so happy these days. Too many lawyers in the system. No offense. None taken. If that's all, we're going to have to leave it at that. If you could just give us a few more minutes, I'm sure we could convince you that- You had your chance to convince us, Dr. Baston. I've found that if I'm not comfortable with a proposal in the first three minutes, it's never a good idea. Contact us again when you've developed your project a bit further. The potential is there, but as Jack said... Thank you for coming. Vice-Chancellor, we can't just let them go. They're the only investors who have agreed to meet with us. It's all right, Doctor. I told you we may have shopped this too early. You have our number, Chancellor Gratt. If things change... Of course. Thank you. This is too important of a project to let it slip away. We'll get another chance. The university isn't giving up on you. I won't let this chance go to waste. I can convince them to fund us. Just you watch. Mrs. Rucker! Mrs. Rucker, please! Just one more moment of your time. I'm sorry, Dr. Baston. We have to be in London by 11. I promise this will only take a second. 
Where's Mr. Harlow? He's meeting me at the car. I just stopped to get a coffee. That coffee isn't fit for human consumption. My research assistant brings in Kopi Lua. Are you trying to bribe me, Doctor? If it will get me another couple minutes with you. All right, a couple minutes, but I'm going to want to fill my thermos with that stuff. Of course. You've been awfully quiet. I was just thinking about Dr. Baston's project. A waste of time. How can feeding the hungry be a waste? I meant our time. Baston needs altruists, not businessmen. They don't have to be mutually exclusive. I didn't say they had to be. When did I suddenly become the bad guy? You tried the stuff yourself. It has no market potential. If they can improve the taste. Is that what took you so long back there? Was Dr. Baston trying to change your mind? Her assistant had some interesting data. I think you should take a look at it. Let me see that thermos. So, she bribed you with civet coffee. I don't see how you can drink the stuff. She just asked that we look over the proposal again, give it a more thorough consideration than the couple minutes we gave them back there. That stuff isn't even going to make it past the Food Standards Agency, and you know it. Crossbred, spliced, gene manipulated, and even if the UK approved it, you think the Americans are going to? She's tried the United Nations, every other food project, and they all said no. It's a lost cause. I'm sorry you feel that way, Jack. If you had your head on straight, you'd feel the same way too. I didn't know you could be bought so cheaply. Copy Luwak isn't cheap. Pull over, I need to use the loo. We're in the middle of nowhere. Just pull over. It's all that coffee you drink. Just be quick. I want to get back to London before. What are you doing? Where did you get that? <laughs> It is done, Master. I'll arrange the funding straight away. Bob, drop everything. I have some good news. Sorry, I was just... Good grief, man. Got enough lunch there? I think I have a tapeworm or something. I, I just can't seem to eat enough. Well, your tapeworm is going to be very happy if you eat all that. Look, I just got a phone call from Stacy Rucker. They're on board with the Odin Project. That's great. Full funding, anything and everything we need to get this out there. And their objections? They're bringing in a marketing firm from New York. Apparently the public has some bee in their hat about good stuff shouldn't taste good. That's why Listerine makes your tongue want to run outside and bury itself. It's deliberate. After a while, we release a new, better tasting version and triple the sales. What does Dr. Baston think? <laughs> She's bouncing up the walls. So it's time for you to start doing what we pay you for and get those contracts drawn up. We'll need to negotiate the terms still. They don't care about terms. They just want this locked up before someone else figures out what a gold mine this is going to be. Okay. I'm just going to run across the street and get something a bit more substantial for lunch first. You're an eating machine. Well, forget it. I'll take you to a big dinner tonight, but I want those documents drawn up before they change their minds again. All right. I'll be back in a couple of hours to check your progress. Feline, I need certified copies of these documents. Can you pl- Feline? Oh. oh, biggest day of our lives and everyone leaves work early. And where does she put the folders? Feline! No! Oh, no, not now! Why is this happening so soon? Just... just wait there for a bit. We'll take care of this. There's been another one. Carly! Carly! Yes, Mum? I'm getting ready to leave. Where's my purse? Oh, there it is. Now listen, I couldn't get Mrs. Libby to babysit for you tonight, so you're on your own. I don't want any funny business. Do your homework and be in bed by nine. I left you something to microwave in the freezer. What time are you going to be home? Since I don't have to worry about a babysitter, I may stay until the morning. But I'll be back before your father comes to pick you up. All right. Oh, and... Water the garden before you go to bed. I haven't had time. 
I don't like to go out there. Just water the plants. I'm using them as part of my new exhibit. Let them die. Just get out there and do what you're told. I won't know if I'm staying in the city until past your bedtime, so I won't call. I should be back before you're awake, but if not, make yourself a sandwich for breakfast. I'll see you later. Bye, Mom. <sighs> She's here. Shh. The little girl can hear us. Stop it. Here. Water. About time. So thirsty. Next time, don't take so long, Carly. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. I don't hear you. Patty, you're here. So, what do you think? Impressive. How did you get so many people to come? The public doesn't really appreciate art anymore these days. Oh, it's more who you know. And I can do the same for you. Can you? Of course. I admit I was a little worried when you called and said you got stuck with the kid tonight. Thought you wouldn't make it. I wasn't staying away from this. Good girl. Got your head on straight. I did warn you, though. Children and art don't mix. My ex said he'd support me if I gave him a brat. I kept my end of the bargain. Well, your efforts haven't gone to waste. You see that man over there? That's Paul Higley. He wants to talk to you. What? Don't you know who he is? He's running the street premiere of that big Hollywood movie tomorrow. He's seen your work and wants to hire you. Aren't you glad you came? Whatever he wants. Tell him I can do it. Good, because he needs a miracle. The designer he had suddenly quit on him. He knows you work with life, and that's exactly what he needs. You're taking over the decoration of the premiere. You, you're not having me on, are you? It's all yours if you want it, and you do want it, don't you? Yes. Good, because I want the commission. Excellent. So let's grab some champagne and meet with Paul to discuss the details. Hello. Carly, is it? Doctor, you came. I was just in the neighborhood and I thought I would check up on you. It's okay. Mrs. Libby isn't here. You can come in. Then your mother decided to stay home then? No, I'm here by myself. What? How old are you, child? I'm ten. Ten years old. My word, you're almost all grown up. <laughs> Still, you should have someone here with you. What's the fun of making popcorn without anyone to share it with, hmm? I'll make some popcorn for us. Well, perhaps I can stay around for a bit. Hmm, what a lovely home you have here. It's my mum's. You live with your father? Sometimes. Mum and Dad share me. It's good that they're both in your life. I can stay with you if you'd like. <laughs> I'm sure you wouldn't find my life to be very exciting. Now, <clears throat> how about we make some of that popcorn and maybe some sweets? Popcorn goes very well with sweets. We don't have any. No sweets. Mum doesn't believe in eating them. Only healthy food like soy and vegetable. Blech. Hmm. What kind of childhood can be without sweets? Um, let me see if I have some here. Ah, yes. What are they? Jelly babies. Go on, you'll love them. Mmm, I love them. See, I told you. Hello? Hi, Mum. Guess what? Shh! Ah, uh, I mean, I did my homework like you told me to. Yes, I watered the garden. Fertilizer? No, you didn't say anything about that. No, no, please, Mum, don't make me go back out there. But, Mum... Yes, Mum. Goodbye. I hope I'm not getting you into trouble. I'm sure your mum wouldn't like a stranger inside your house. Ah, maybe I'd better go. No, please. All right, just for a little while longer. Mum wants me to fertilize the garden. Would you do it? No, I'm not much of a gardener. 
Always meant to take it up, but uh, never can seem to find the time. You can do it. And by the time you're finished, I'll have the popcorn made and we can tell each other stories. How about that? Please. I don't want to go out there. Why not? There are things out there. Things? You mean like icky bugs and caterpillars? No. Well, what sort of things? I don't want to say. I shan't imagine a big, brave girl like you is scared of anything. They said if I don't talk about them, they won't hurt me. Hurt you? My dear, who in the garden is going to hurt you? The plants. The plants? I can hear them talking. Really now? They're mean. Oh, the imagination of youth. Go and do what your mum tells you to do, whilst I make us something to eat. Off you go, dear child. Yes, Doctor. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. You told him. We told you not to tell. You're not real. You know we are. And we can't have that. Leave me alone. We're strong enough now to deal with you. Let go of me! We'll make you one of us. No! Then you won't say anything else. Ever again. Mummy! Mummy! Don't go near the garden! Kill! I'll kill you all! Ah! Harry, get away from that thing! It's Daddy! The Odin Project. Named after its head, Dr. Odin, I assume. It's Dr. Baston. He's just like Daddy. Run! Ah! What do we do about the monster? It's not a monster, Kai. It's a human being. I have some people here who want to meet you. You!